Yo, what's up guys? It's Exynos here, and today we are going to be talking about CES 2013, which is going on right now in Las Vegas. Now, for those that don't know, CES is the Consumer Electronics Show, and more and more video games are becoming a standard consumer electronic, and there's been some great video game announcements coming from, as I'm sure you can see on the screen, NVIDIA. So let's get right into it. Their first big announcement was what's called GFE, or GeForce Experience. Now, as you can see on the screen, it says Console Simplicity PC Performance. What this program is meant to do, and it will eventually come on all computers running NVIDIA, and it will be part of a driver update so every computer will get it. Um, but what it's designed to do is you run the program, you click enable or whatever, and it will go onto NVIDIA servers, view after analyzing your computer hardware, view what um, the best settings are for the game that you are optimizing for, and it will auto-optimize the graphics so that you don't have to remember what does what. You don't have to go into the settings to view the different types of changes and etc. It's going to be very simple while still getting you the best graphics your computer can handle at a good frame rate. The next big announcement was what's called GRID. Now as you can see it says GRID Gaming System. It's a cloud gaming architecture server thing. Essentially what it's designed to do is what OnLive I felt could never do and that is for one become mainstream and two truly perform well. Now this will allow you to, especially now that we're getting better and better internet in the um, United States and in other countries, stream games. So instead of having to have the hardware that can handle these games, essentially you will work with a cloud gaming service like Gakai and pay for your games on that website and then just stream them to whatever device you're using. So instead of having to have a TV and a game system and a computer to play all these different types of games, um, you will just have, for example, an LG TV be able to come home, turn on your TV, grab a controller, and start playing anything from Crisis to Trine. It's going to be a great system, and they're incorporating this technology um, into some of their other devices that I'll talk about in a little bit. Next up, we have the i500 soft modem. This was announced by NVIDIA. They purchased a company that was working on a software modem rather than a standard um, single-use modem. The point of this is to eventually be able to, um, once you have this modem in your chips, instead of it searching for a signal and not being able to change how it searches, for one, they'll be able to update the modem to have better um, programming to search for signals properly, but also it will get a lot better battery life because it will know when to enable and disable certain features. This thing can do over a trillion operations per second, so it's going to be a mighty powerful modem to get you the best signal possible while still per, um, maintaining battery life. Next up we have the Tegra 4, which is their newest mobile processor. Tegra 3 is a great chip, it was found in um, devices like the Nexus 7, which is become very, becoming a very popular device. Tegra 4 is the next step up. It has, um, it's a quad core once again, just like the Tegra 3, but it's using A15 cores instead of A9. Essentially what that means for people that aren't up on the ARM architecture is it's just a higher performing design for the cores. They're going to get better speed, better battery life, and etc. Also, this device has 72 GPU cores, which what that means is you're going to get six times the graphics performance compared to a Tegra 3 device. Um, this is going to be a definitely an outstanding chip. I can't wait to see how it performs in real life. And they're promising good battery life on this. Also, you'll notice it says 4G LTE. This is the first time an NVIDIA device will officially support LTE, which is becoming the big and fast network. AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon have it. T-Mobile is getting it later this year. It's the main network that will bring in the next um, speed of mobile internet. Now, one of the first Tegra 4 devices announced, and this is the first tablet announced to support Tegra 4, is Vizio's 10-inch tablet. Vizio is fairly new to the tablet market, but they make great displays, and that's one key feature on this device. You're getting a great display, which is a really high resolution. You're getting the amazing Tegra 4 chips. You're going to be able to get good gaming performance at that high resolution, and etc. Let's take a look at the exact details on this chip. So on this chip, you're, or on this 
tablet, you're getting a very slim 10.1 inch tablet, a 2560 by 1600 display, NVIDIA's Tegra 4 processor, 32 gigs of memory, expandable memory, so you can put in a micro SD card. It has Wi Fi, NFC, Bluetooth. A uh, 5 megapixel rear camera for those morons that like taking rear photos. A 1.3 megapixel front camera, which I'm going to assume records at least 720p video to support HD video chat. Um, that's sort of becoming a new standard for devices. But this was not the only Tegra 4 device announced during CES. So let's get into the next one. Now this was a very surprising announcement. Nobody expected this. This was a well-kept secret. We have Project Shield. This is a new device coming out from Nvidia. They don't have a price or release date yet, but we are expecting it to be very expensive because they don't make money off Android market, so they can't sell it at a loss or at even and still make money. They have to sell it at a profit. Um, so expect it to be four to six hundred dollars. Um, very expensive, but very cool. So as you can see, it has a screen, it's a 5 inch 720p screen, so you're going to get great gaming performance. It runs Tegra 4, as you can expect, it's a new Nvidia device. But what's really nice is it has true gaming controls. Unlike any mobile device, the closest thing to it would be the PlayStation Vita, but this outclasses that in every way. You're getting a true controller feel, um, some people won't like the... PlayStation 3 placement of the thumbsticks, but it's still something we haven't seen before. Um, like this design, it's a clamshell design similar to the DS where it will fold closed so that it becomes a little more portable. Um, but this thing has great performance. It runs stock Android. It has some customizability as far as the look goes. You can get this custom back plating. It has great battery, great audio, and you'll see all these different images popping up on screen. Um, but this is going to be a great device, and not just does it run Tegra 4, so it's going to run all of the Tegra Zone games. It will have exclusive games like Hawken. It will also have this great, amazing feature, which is... It can stream your PC games over local internet. Now, over local doesn't seem like too big a deal because it has to be in-home. But what this means is that you can have your computer sitting in your office or your bedroom where you would normally have it. You can go out into the living room and either sit on the couch or plug it into a up to 4K display because this device supports 4K output, which very few things do. And... You can be playing your PC games and streaming them over your wireless router. So you can play, you know, any game that's on Steam, any or most Origin games. So you can play Borderlands, Need for Speed, Call of Duty, all of that connected to your Steam account or whatever to your big TV. This is utilizing some of the technology found in the cloud um, NVIDIA grid along with GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience is required which means you do have to have an NVIDIA GTX processor, so uh, 660, 670, or 680, or 690, um, and obviously the 760 and up when that is announced as well. Um, that's pretty much it for this. I will be covering other topics for CES Gaming. I'm going to make a video specifically talking about peripherals, the keyboard and mice that were announced at CES, um, some other things. I might talk about 4K displays because that seems to be the future of television and where the future of television resolution comes, the future of gaming resolution comes. Um, but if you want to see more CES news, subscribe up top. Also, if you did enjoy this video or if you learned some really cool things about the NVIDIA thing, please hit like. It does help me out. And comment and let me know what you guys think about the Project Shield because this is a mighty interesting device, but it will come at a price. We don't know the exact price, and Nvidia could be ploying with, like, toying with us and saying, "Oh, it's gonna be, you know, we're not taking the standard um, low price route, but it could end up being fairly cheap when it comes to market in order to build up hype and get people to like it." So we'll see how that goes. Um, but let me know what you guys think. That's it. Bye.